everybody. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the third step of the process. I think this is going to be four videos. You can see here that what I have is a new sketch that's been created on the bottom surface of that base right here. I've also projected the outer lines here. So I have four purple lines here on the outer rim. And I have three rectangles drawn. The rectangles are each the same. They're 0.04 out from the side, or from the side and they're 0.05 wide. Do notice the orientation. So this one is tall and skinny compared to these two on the top, which are short and wide. Okay, and that has to do with the orientation of the rectangle. I got those dimensions from this little detailed view that we have here. You can see here's 0.05 wide, 0.09 here. So a difference of 0.04 that's going to stick out from the edge and 0.05 wide. So that's my starting point. You want to get to that. If you haven't, pause the video until that point in time. But now let's do some stuff with it. Okay, so I'm in the middle of this sketch. What I'm going to do is just a couple of things. I'm going to get this rectangle into place. It's really simple to do. I'm going to use the coincident constraint. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to hold down shift so I can grab the midpoint of this rectangle. See that? Okay, midpoint of this line. And I want that midpoint to lie directly on top of the midpoint of this purple line here. So shift button is being held down again. And I click, and you'll notice that now it's black. It cannot move. So that is completely locked into place, and that's ready to go. Up here, it's a little bit different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this needs to lie on top of this. But you'll notice the coincident constraint doesn't work because they're lined. So I'm going to use collinear instead. And when I use the collinear constraint, it'll let me. Okay, I'm going to come over here and say this needs to lie on top of this line. There we go. It's locked in. And the same thing goes for the other one. So now those are both on the right line. I just need to say then I need to keep these things hit escape so I get done with the collinear constraint. I need to keep them from moving left to right like this. Okay, so that's just a couple of quick dimensions. And I'll notice that if I zoom in a little bit on this, that I have a dimension of to the midpoint of this line 0.95 from the right surface to the mid middle. Okay, that's a center line, the middle of the rectangle 0.95. So let's come back here. And one of the things that's really nice about Fusion 360 that Autodesk Inventor would not do is I can actually dimension to that midpoint. So I'm going to grab this line. I hit D for dimension. And if I hold down Shift, I can go to, see, it gives me the X here. Okay. Uh-oh. Cancel. What did I lock into? Let's see here. This thing can move left and right. Okay, let's try this again. Ready? Dimension to the midpoint down to this line. And it actually lets me dimension to that midpoint 0.95. Whoops, accidentally clicked enter instead. Let me go to edit this 0.95. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. I need to pull that up here. That is, uh, let's see here, 1.94 to the middle of the back rectangle. 1.94, same idea. Dimension, zoom in, shift button held, midpoint 2, front surface is... 1.94. So I've got those locked into place. All three rectangles are ready to go. Okay. Now, before I get done, there's a couple of things that I'm going to go to get all three are of, of the rectangles that are, are remaining. I'm going to use a mirror pattern in order to do that. Now, I could easily just go through and, and create all six of these rectangles. It's not that big of a deal, but I do think this is a nice little um, a nice little step for, for making things easier. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to draw a line that goes from the midpoint all the way to the midpoint on the other side. Click OK. And I am going to take that and turn it into a construction line by clicking on it and highlighting it and hitting X. I'm going to do the same thing from top to bottom here. So midpoint all the way down to midpoint. I'm going to hit Escape. So I'm done with that. Click on it. X. So I have a couple of lines that subdivide the bottom of this base. And now I can go through and I can use the mirror constraint or the, the mirror command. So create mirror. Okay, and what I want to mirror is the objects are, let's see here, uh, I don't know if it's going to let me do this, okay, it doesn't like me to do this, okay, well, um, we'll use those in just a second, I guess, hmm. that's interesting, I, I can't, oh, sorry, wrong mirror, I have to go to sketch tab and use this mirror, so the mirror that was in create is for 3D mirroring, mirroring of features, this one is for mirroring of lines, so click on this one instead. There we go. Okay. The objects that I want to use. Now notice one, two, three, four, all four of the rectangle. And this one as well. One, two, three, 
four. Those are the objects that I want to use. You should have eight. I accidentally kicked a corner, so I have nine. Mirror line is going to be this. I click OK. You'll notice that now I have the rectangles on the bottom as well. So let's repeat that then. Sketch. Let's mirror this rectangle. One, two, three, four. And the mirror line here is the vertical line that we drew a second ago. Click OK. Now you have all six rectangles drawn and properly constrained. I'm ready to stop the sketch. Let's look at this thing. Oh, not from the above. Let's look at it from below. And now I want to extrude, and I'm just going to choose all six of the rectangles. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see. I extrude these upward. It's not a cut. It's a join. And it's not a distance. It is a two object. The object that I want to go to is, let's see if I can get here, whoop, 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 this one, okay? So this object here, or I can even say, you know, if I wanted to, I could create, the, go to the top, right there, okay? Click OK, and what we should see here, let's see how it worked. Okay, got the front and the back, and did not get the sides. So the problem now is that the sides, it looks like, it's a little bit different, the sides hit this surface instead of the top one. So let's go back. Let's redo this, okay? Um, add, add the feature to the object. The other object that I want to extrude to is going to include then, whoops, let's try that again. Right click, edit the feature. I want to go to, um, the object is going to also include these. So I'm gonna hold down maybe shift, see, can you give me all of them? So it looks like it's struggling with that a little bit. Choose all. Let's see here. Let's choose all instead and see what that does. Ah, looky there. Okay, so it acts a little bit differently than Inventor. We can choose all, and it goes all the way to the next object. So there we go. We have the tabs created. So that's good for this video. We've got one more video left to create. It's going to be how do I adjust the material and the appearance to make it that nice see-through green color that we see in the actual part.